So my name's Carl R. Hearn, and uh, I'm from, I mean, here. I grew up in Ireland, Montreal, Toronto, U.S., a little bit all over. But I speak French as well. I'm an Irish Montrealer. Hi, I'm Dale Dickey. Um, I live in Los Angeles. I didn't grow up there, thank God. I grew up in Tennessee, lived in New York, and now I'm, I'm based in L.A. And uh, un peu French, Francaise, so I really don't speak French. I apologize. How do you say I'm... Never mind. Okay. <laughs> it's been going really well. Uh, the film has been at, I don't know, maybe 10 festivals over the last six months. Uh, and now this is our North American premiere and uh, the film is being released theatrically in different countries around the world. It's being sold in all different territories. And, you know, the best part is being at the festivals. The audiences reacted really, really well. So, uh, yeah, so far, so good. I wrote the film, the character, which is really, you know, the whole film. It's the G. It's about this older woman. Uh, was inspired by my Irish grandmother. And, uh, you know, that's who I had in mind when I was writing the film. But the second the script was done, the casting process started, Dale was the person I had in mind because I'd seen her in different things in small roles. But what I had done is I had sort of taken a bunch of these movies and kind of knit them together in my mind, you know. So in this one, she's, you know, sawing off someone's feet. But in this one, She's sort of a tender kind of protector with a sort of understated caring. That's leave no trace, you know. Uh, uh, and you could see the range, but rarely was she called upon to have that entire range in a role, you know. And so I, I just knew that she would be amazing. Well, thank you, Carl. <laughs> Yeah, Carl, I got, I don't know if I got a letter from you first or my agents reached out and, and I read the script and I, I just instantly thought it was really good. You know, it's a great role for an older actress and uh, it does sort of, it gives me a chance to have a through line to carry an entire movie, uh, sort of a compilation of a lot of different characters I've done in small parts over the years. But then I did a, I read the script and Carl and I did a Zoom and I liked him very much. I liked the way he spoke about directing. And so, yeah, I came up and we had a fabulous cast and crew, all in Montreal. I was the only American up here. So. She's a woman of a certain age um, that's sort of fallen on hard times. She's caring for her husband who's very ill. She doesn't want to go gently into that old age night that's coming her way. And uh, they end up getting scammed by uh, a group of people. Um, if this does go on, it has gone on. Carl knows more about it, where they just come in and become your guardian, particularly elderly people that have no family. Maybe they think they have money. Maybe they're incapacitated mentally. Anyhow, they end up taking my husband and I away because I'm not taking proper care of him. And we get put into this facility and... Um, some bad things start to happen and basically they mess with the wrong grandmother and then I turn into the badass vigilante because you don't mess with my family. I have a line in the film where <clears throat> if you let your anger go you can live to be you live longer. The G just is a, is a big big ball of anger through most of this she has a lot of repressed anger and i think carl can speak more to uh the way he that he wrote the character based on his grandmother who everyone was afraid of um, but i've played a lot of pretty dark characters in my life um i'm kind of used to going there it, it is uncomfortable to stay in that range for that long um but i it's it's a terrific role i just pull on all just focus and concentrate and uh Find your hidden anger. You know what would what would you do if somebody you know treated your family wrong? That that you don't go after people's families. You just don't. For me, the the key to the film is the casting. The thing is that wasn't the most challenging part of the film. I mean, the casting fell into place fairly quickly, and I was happy with everyone we were able to get. Uh, no, I mean, I'd say that the the real day-to-day -day challenge, what really crushed us was, you know, time, not having the budget, not having the time. And that's, 
you know, that's that's an old song, you know, in independent film, but it was uh it was it was pretty tough and we had to cut a whole bunch of scenes, you know, uh the week before we started shooting, for example, you know, and and that led to further complications and so that was an ongoing thing. And and the only way we were able to get our, our days was this very, very highly committed crew who would, you know, kill themselves trying to make 14 hours and get, you know, an endless number of setups because they actually, I mean, there's five unions on it, but instead of, you know, a bunch of guys sitting around smoking cigarettes, these guys were like all working so hard, extra hard so that we could get our vision, you know? So yeah, there were a lot of, we had a COVID outbreak, you know, on set. We had, I mean, there were so many challenges. I mean, to be totally blunt, it was a nightmare for me. But um, what made it, uh, what made it work were the people, you know, we had good people, we had a great cast and uh, we made it happen. Yeah, I mean, we did have an idea to have cameras, but uh, those were cut just like the drones and all of the various things we we could not uh afford those uh we had a, a an ari uh alexa alexa mini so we chose that because it was the best camera for our our budget simple as that it's a camera that you know the dp and i were both familiar with and uh you know uh then it was really getting into which lenses we could afford and what have you so everything was very much you know on a budget on a tight budget but you know, I think um, what the camera crew was able to do in very limited time, I mean, doing very fast setups, you know, I think I think we did a great job. I uh, started writing my autobiography when I was eight years old. So uh, obviously I have some issues. <laughs> Your turn. I don't, I don't think I knew that story. Now I'm even more intrigued by you, Carl. Um, I, I started doing theater as a kid. The university in my hometown in Tennessee had a great theater program, and I just got bitten by the bug early on. I didn't want to do anything else. And, um, you know, I come from the Appalachian region where storytelling is in, in their bones. You know, you can just go up into the mountains and listen to the guys. They're full of folklore and stories. And... That's how we learn and grow and move is, is by listening to other people's stories. And I think this is an important story in many ways, uh, the social aspects, this does really happen. Um, and seeing a, an older woman on, on screen in this kind of role, uh, it's, it's a different story to tell, but I think Carl did an excellent job and the crew, we really had an amazing crew. They really worked their butts off to get, to get this done, so. Did we get along on the set? He's hard. <laughs> we did. I always told people if, if I get into a space and I start to turn, which I could do if I'm really anxious, you know, say, Dale, snap out of it. I mean, yeah, Dale, Dale is, you know, joking aside, Dale's an absolute pleasure to work with, not just because she's pleasant, but because of her commitment. Um, so I could tell all kinds of little anecdotes about that. Um, but she's just fully, fully committed to the role. And, um, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll give you one example. You know, we were shooting a, a stunt scene. This is the Canadian winter outside. And um, Dale, uh, they wanted to use a stunt person, but Dale insisted on getting a harness on and climbing a metal ladder in her bare feet in sub-zero weather and then doing it again and again and again and then pretending to fall off the ladder and you know i mean she just totally committed to the role it was wonderful and i think that kind of commitment is what shines through in the performance as well I and mean, that's what gives you a great performance so um yeah no i mean amazing to work with absolutely My first on-camera experience, I was uh, in my mid-twenties, and I was playing an Appalachian Mountain woman in a series for CBS. They were filming it in Tennessee, and I, I had to be very, very emotional. It was a big old crying. She kills her baby accidentally. It's like the 1800s, backwoods, and uh, very, very emotional. And I'd never, you know, the director saw me getting worked up and focusing, and he pulled me aside and said, Dale, 
don't get yourself worked up. I know you're nervous. You're in a small cabin with 40 people in here with lights. You've never done this. He said, all you got to remember is that I trust you and you need to trust me and trust yourself and we're going to be fine. And that taught me a huge lesson. You know, you, you, you trust the director, you're in good hands and they trust you that you're going to work together well. And, and that's the only way is to let go of that anxiety and, and fear and it's it's hard when there's that many people watching you cry or scream or make out or whatever you're doing. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I did think of one and I agree with Dale. I mean, I think the trust is huge on set. I thought Dale took some real risks in this film and she did it on the basis of trusting me. And I feel like I was able to reward that. You know, I didn't want to let her down. So that trust is really is really huge. Um, first time on set, actually, what came to me is my first time on set as an actor. Uh, I was in a student film and uh, I was playing the devil who is playing poker. Yeah, with, with someone. And I did learn something from this experience because the, the director just kept yelling at me. This is obviously a student director. More evil. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, and uh, at some point not he was, an yeah, not an actress, just no more evil. At some point he was like, okay, we got it. So I think I delivered. <laughs> I think um, theatrically I got to play the university I went to brings me back to uh, work with their grad students about every five or six years. I go in and work as a guest artist. I got to do uh streetcar named desire and play blanche which i never thought i'd play in my life it just about killed me but it was one of the most glorious experiences uh th that and also mrs lovett and sweeney todd i love musical theater i used to sing a lot when i was younger before i started doing bad things drinking and smoking um <laughs> but uh yeah i love theater i love live performances there's nothing like a live audience and you know you don't get a second take you just have to keep going even if you drop four bars of the song, <laughs> I did. Well, that's similar to us. We didn't have any second takes either. Maybe a few. <laughs> maybe, maybe two or three. No, we had a few. We had a few. I'll give you one film that I love just because I happen to know that Dale also loves this film, but it, it's not relevant to the film we made or to this festival. But uh, one of my favorite films is The Deer Hunter. Uh, it's just a film I absolutely love, and we talked about it briefly on set. It just happened to be some a film that Dale also really likes. So, yeah, the the Deer Hunter. I mean, it, 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 when people ask what your favorite movie is, and it depends on well, what you know, To Kill a Mockingbird's up there on my list from when I was younger. Um, but the Deer Hunter, I saw at a time in my life that it it just affected me. I was old enough to understand the Vietnam War and the, the, the generational, the huge sweeping story of the guys before, during, and after the war, and the performance is just outstanding. <laughs>